Hi everybody, it's Rita Freecott here from Picked and Polished in Alexandria, New Hampshire, where I love to help you create beautiful things for your home on a budget. And I'm sorry I'm a few minutes late today. I was supposed to start at 10, but I was having some technical difficulties. So, um, but I'm super excited you're here with me. Let me know if you're here, say hi. Um, and let me know where you're watching from. I love to help people with our DIY projects, so if you have questions, I'm here to help. Um, hey Nikki, how are you? Um, so yeah, say hi if you're here and watching. So today, you guys, I'm going to be sharing one of my, my very favorite home decor pieces that I use all year round, this is the time of year that we all feel like our house is empty because we've taken down all the decor pieces and from the holiday. And this is the one piece that I feel like I always get, always gets noticed when people come in my home. But most importantly, it's the piece that I feel like I can use all year round and change out very, very simply. And the best part about this um, project is some of you might be able to even do this project for free, depending on what you have kicking around the house. So, um, hi Paige, thanks for watching today. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to be using some, some very basic um, supplies. Lots of times you can find these things like on the curb or at the thrift store, or you might have some kicking around in your basement. So um, today I'm going to be using an old window. But you can do this project with any size window. You can do it with any frame that you find at the um, thrift stores. You know, you can get thrift, thrift stores have old frames for like pennies sometimes. Um, so let me show you what we're going to be working with today. I have this old three-paned window. And what I did was I knocked all the glass out of it. And when I did that, I wrapped this in a really heavy-duty um, contractor bag. I wore goggles and gloves and I used a hammer and I knocked out all the panes and then I went in with a um, I went in with a like a little scraper and pulled out the existing metal. I mean the existing glass. So hi Francis, thanks for watching. Let me know where you guys are watching from. Um, and let me know if you have any questions along the way because I'll be watching the screen while I work. Um, and so we'll be using this today, but again, you guys can use if you have a bigger paned window, or this is what I use typically in my home on my wall. I have this old barnwood frame, which you can, if you're handy, you can make one of these easily, or you can pick them up at thrift stores and pop out the artwork. Um, and these are also great for this project. So don't feel like you have to have exactly what I'm using for this. So we're going to start with the frame. That's going to be the foundation of the project. And then I've got some two old mason jars. Okay, and you don't have to have antique mason jars, but I like these because I like that I can use, I like the rustiness of the metal handle. Oh, Paige, you're in Laconia. That's awesome. I recognized your name. I knew that I did. Um, so, so you can use new jars. You can use wide mouth. You can use small mouth mason jars. So it's very versatile. So I've got these jars we're going to be using. You could use, because I've got that window with three panes, you could use three jars. Um, with the frame, the barnwood frame, I use typically two jars. Um, and you can pick different sizes depending on what is proportionate for the size frame you're using. Um, and then, but for the middle today, I'm going to be throwing in a wintry, beautiful wintry wreath. Um, and again, that can be changed out. Hey, Lynn, thanks for tuning in today. Um, so, yeah, so this is like my, my absolute favorite thing because I can... Every single season, I can change it out very, very quickly and easily and on a dime, you guys. Um, and that's what I'm all about. So um, so I've got my jars. I've got my frame. I'm going to be using Dixieville Chuck Mineral Paint today. You can see I've already added one coat. Typically, when I paint glass, if I'm selling something with glass that's painted, I use a product called Slick Stick by Dixieville. But because this is for my home decor, and I know I'm not going to be filling it with water, I'm not really concerned that Chuck mineral paint will still adhere really well. So I'm just going to do, I'm just going to go straight on the glass. I just made sure I cleaned it really well with white lightning cleaner before I started. Um, I'm painting straight on glass and then I'll probably seal it with some gator hide and that will also help keep the um, finished product, you know, from scratching off or whatever. So um, if you don't have slick stick or a glass primer on hand, you can, if you're not going to be filling it with water and cleaning it really well with water, you can just go ahead and paint on the glass. 
Some people like to clean with alcohol wipes or you can scuff up with a little bit of sandpaper, but just make sure you clean them really, really well before you get started. So there's that. I'm gonna be using Dixie Belle Sandbar today. Um, I haven't switched all my bottles over to the ones with the red caps, which I have on my in my Amazon shop. I like those better. Uh, I have a lot of questions about my, my squirt bottles, actually, believe it or not. Um, I'm gonna be using the Gator Hide and because this month we're focusing on um, all of my lives will be thrifty decor and all about kitchen cabinet painting and glazing because glazing goes hand in hand with kitchen cabinet painting a lot of times. So um, today I'm going to be transferring that technique onto this small project. I want you guys to see that you can do, you can learn something on a small project like how to glaze and then take what you've learned on something small and transfer it to a bigger project like kitchen cabinets or maybe a piece of furniture so that you can um, feel comfortable you know going for it and being fearless in all the projects that you want to do so I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Van Dyke glaze today but I'm assuming any most any glaze over ch any chalk mineral based paint will work um, for a project like this um, and then other than that I just have these little hooks that I'm going to be using to put into the frame and I can actually find a link for these and post the size that I use. This one's a little funky because I I've put some heavy things on in my jars and it's kind of bent. I took mine apart so I could do this with you today. Hey Brenda, I got this weird hair flopping around. Um, and then I wanted to show you guys too that I love these sawtooth hangers um, because I get them on Amazon. I'll also add the link to that or I'll put them in my Amazon shop. I love them because I don't have to hammer, you know the little ones that you have to hammer those little tiny nails in? They're just a pain. So for something like this with more than one jar, you're gonna to wanna to use hangers on opposite ends of the frame because um, if, you have, if you don't have it balanced out, it's gonna slide on you when you get it on the wall. So I always make sure I have these sawtooth hangers on hand for projects like this. Um, and then I'm just going to be using, honestly, I've shared with you guys before that I buy garlands of things when they're on sale. And then instead of going out and spending a fortune all the time at the, at the different stores, I just buy like clumps of things and keep them on hand all year and snip. So I'll snip from a garland or I'll, this, these little cotton balls came from a wreath I have, a cotton wreath. And it had way too many cotton balls on it, so I just snipped a few off. I didn't have to spend anything more. I just kind of shopped what I had in my house. So I encourage you guys to do the same. Um, and then I had some cute little berries left over from the holiday, but they're silver and white, so they kind of go with the wintry theme I have going on with this piece. Um, and so the great thing about having these little fillers is you can change them out anytime. So when springtime comes, I'll just throw in some colorful um, faux flowers or paper flowers or whatever, and it'll look so cute. So I want to get started today. Uh, I'll be using the Dixie Belle. A lot of people ask me about my brushes, so I'm going to get right to that. I'll be using the Dixie Belle large synthetic brush and the flat and the large round um, today. And then some just some generic um, kind of craft brushes. So let me know what projects you guys have in mind doing this weekend, if any. I would love to hear. And I think on Sundays it might be a good day to share um, what projects you've got going on. Okay, Nikki, have a good day. I love you. That's my mother-in-law. I always joke and tell people I married my husband so I could have her as my mother-in-law. She's fabulous. So, um, all right, so I'm just going to go ahead and start painting. And you guys know that I love to use the hair dryer for dry time, for speeding it up. This is only my second coat, and um, it's covering beautifully. And don't do what I do and put your paint on a dirty tablecloth, like I'm using um, one of those felt back tablecloths and I just pour my paint on it because it doesn't go through it. But sometimes if I don't clean it off, I get bluges in my paint because it's like picking up like yucky stuff from my tablecloth that I didn't clean off from my last project. So um, let me know again if you guys have any questions. And I'm just, um, when you're painting jars, you just want to go kind of lightly and the most important thing is you want to make sure the layers of paint before you start another coat are completely dry in between and for this project I like to pick a neutral color because 
um, again, I want it to be something that can last all year long. I don't want to feel like um, I have to change it all the time. The only thing I'm going to change is the, what I put in the jars and maybe my wreath, right? Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and quickly paint these, and then I can't wait to show you guys how easy it is to add glaze onto jars. Um, you can also do some distressing. You can do, I've done tutorials where I show you guys how to do wax finishes on painted jars. So remember, when you learn a technique like this, you can apply these simple techniques that I teach in my sign painting classes and different online courses. You can apply those techniques to furniture too, um, or small items. Once you get the hang and the feel of a product like a glaze, then you kind of have a sense of what you can do with it and how comfortable you are with that. Hi, Debbie. Good morning. Yeah, you guys let me know where you're watching from. I know Debbie's right down the street from me. All right, so I've got this painted. And I think for today's purposes, for time purposes, I'm probably going to go ahead and um, I'm going to just quickly, I may only glaze one of them. We'll see how, we'll see how fast I can do this. Maybe I'll do, I'll do one jar, um, I'll paint both jars and I'll just glaze one of them so you guys can see. And then I will be doing a blog post about the complete, um, the complete decor piece on my website this weekend. So um, if you subscribe to my website, you'll get notified when the blog post has been posted. Um, and that will show you like the finished end project when everything is completely done. We'll get most of it done today together on the live, but hi Connie. You're watching from Florida. Oh, I bet it's so much warmer there than it is here. Although today was a, it's a pretty sunny, beautiful day in New Hampshire. It's not always the case in January. So what do you guys have planned for New Year projects? Do you guys have any um, crafty projects or home decor projects you're gonna be working on? anytime soon. All right, so here's my glass jars. You guys might have to close your ears because I have to just quickly, um, quickly dry them. I'm going to turn my phone down a little bit so you can see better what I'm doing. All right, so I'm just going to use my hair dryer and just quickly blow dry this um, so that I can put the super fast. Alright, so see how quickly that dried you guys? So fast. It's a chalk based paint. It's super flat. The dry time is amazing on it. Um, so now that it's dry, and, and if I were doing more of these, I would probably make, take a little more time to make sure they're, like, dry them a little bit more with a hair dryer. Um, and what I'm going to do now is, there's a couple different ways you can use glaze, okay? So you can, you can go right over the, the paint with the glaze, which is good if you want, um, a really, a really, um, like people can't see what I'm doing here. Sorry. If you want a really grungy sort of glazed feel, you can go right over the paint and then clear coat, okay? But if you want sort of a clean finished feel, you're going to do, and you're going to want to be able to control how much glaze um, sits on the surface. Because remember, this chalk mineral paint is porous. Any chalk mineral paint that you use is going to be pretty porous. And it's going to kind of... Um, soak in whatever you put over it, so whether it's wax or glaze, but if you clear coat it, it sort of seals it, and then it gives you a surface to manipulate the glaze and waxes on a little bit easier. So keep that in mind if you're doing, um, if you're doing those finishes with glaze at home. If you want a super grungy, uneven look, you can go right over the paint and then seal. If you want um, a more clean finished look um, and you want a little bit more control over how much glaze shows, then you're going to clear coat before you glaze. So we have Diane from Colorado. Hi, Diane. I used to live in Breckenridge and in Dillon, actually, way back in the day. 
Um, you're practicing to do a blended chalk paint on your pantry door. Ooh, nice. I've got some great um, live videos on this Facebook page on blended finishes. If you need any help, um, you can check those out or shoot me a message. And I'll be doing some online courses on that um, at some point soon, too. All right, so now that this is dry, I'm going to go ahead over it with the Gator Hide because I want to show you guys the difference between what glaze does when you get it on a clear coated surface versus a um, chalky based surface. All right, so again, don't do what I do. Just pour my paint onto my tablecloth that hasn't been completely cleaned. Okay, so Gator Hide is just a polyacrylic clear coat. It's super tough. Um, it has a satin sheen. I'm just going to go over, and you'll know if your paint's not dry enough because when you start to go over it on a glass surface, it'll start to pull up if it's not properly dry. And I'm okay with the fact that I've got some missing, you know, um, missing spots on my glass where the chalk paint is just sort of not completely covered because I like that rustic farmhousey look. So um, you know, it really just depends on what kind of look you want. Here we go. Right, so I've got this almost completely clear coated. Okay. And then, and again, if you're not someone who's too picky about wiping things down like this for decor, you don't even necessarily need to clear coat, but I always do just because I like that finished feel. And since we're glazing today, I just wanted to show you what um, what it looks like when when you've put glaze over a finished coat. Okay. So again, you guys, let me know if you have any questions. So I'm just going to quickly dry this. It's got the gator hide on it, and you can see it's got a little bit of a shine to it. It'll flatten a little as it dries. Having a hair dryer on here. Not really for my hair. Alright, so see how fast that is? And again, if I were doing like, you know, something that wasn't such a small item. I would really want to make sure that my paint and my gator hide are very, very, very well dried before I go for it with the glaze. Um, but this is a smaller project and I'm okay with it looking a little rustic. So you can see, this is what it looks like before we put glaze on it. You guys see that okay? Oh good, I'm glad Paige. So I'm hoping that my little lives will give you lot, be a lot of information packed into a short amount of time in a really efficient way so you can feel like over the weekends, you can jump into something and get stuff done and know exactly what you want to do. I can help you get there in a faster way. Yes, Breckenridge is beautiful. Um, okay, so now I'm going to work on the glaze. So guys, the glaze um, is sort of a product you can wipe off after you add it, or you can just brush it on if you want a super streaky look. Um, I'm going to let this one with the clear coat sort of sit for a minute and set. This one has just the paint on it, okay, and I didn't hair dry it, I probably should have, but um, I'm going to show you what happens with glaze when you add it to uh, a really flat finish without a clear coat. So the Van Dyke glaze is like a grungy brown, um, it's definitely a brown undertone glaze. They also have, um, I love their grunge glaze, which is grunge glaze, which is gray. All right, so I'm just going to work in small areas, but I'm going to use long, even strokes, and I'm going to try to do it in a, try to work in areas where I can wipe off faster. So this is going to be my grungy one. This doesn't have a clear coat on it. Sorry about the sunlight. So if you wanted it to be super grungy, you could just leave it like that, right? But if I want it to be a little less grungy, I'm going to kind of wipe some of that glaze off gently because I haven't really thoroughly dried my paint yet so I have to be gentle not to pull it up. So the glaze just adds a lot of dimension and depth and um, just interest to anything that you're doing. I always feel like glazes and waxes, um, finishing products are what 
it's like um, the analogy I use is it's like a, wearing a black dress with no accessories. You have to have those shoes and the earrings and whatever else, even though I could barely dress myself. Um, I can dress up a mason jar like nobody's business, right? So, um, so anyway, so it's kind of like that. Like it's kind of when you just leave it painted, I feel like it's kind of like meh. And then when you add some glaze, it just takes it to a different level, okay? So obviously we're working in cracks and crevices. So the glaze will sit more heavily in your low part. So do you see, let me just get this out of the sun. Do you guys see how on the S right there, the glaze is sitting in the crevices of the S. It's gonna sit on your low parts, whereas the wax will kind of hit the higher parts unless you work it in to the low parts. So there's a difference right there. They're also applied differently. They have a totally different um, like feeling to them and consistency. So here we go. I'm just going to keep wiping and adding, and then I'll end up with like a really almost like a primitive grungy farmhouse sort of feel. Um, so you guys see that's the side that's glazed. I'm having a hard time with the lighting today. And this is the side that is not. So it goes from meh to like, Ooh, that's kind of cool, right? It gives it like an old grungy sort of feeling. All right, so that's that one. Now I'm going to do the one that has the clear coat on it. And that's going to allow me to have a little bit more control on the glaze. Hi, Sarah. Happy New Year to you, too. And you can apply glaze with a sponge. Like if I'm working on a big surface, I will apply glaze with a sponge or a really nice brush. But for this purpose, it's best to use like a smaller brush. Okay, so here we go. So here's the one with the finish on it with the gator hide on it. And I'm going to go ahead and just, right? So I can wipe more off. And more will just sit in those little sections when I have the clear coat on it, okay? And this is why I chose to do this while we're doing um, the month we're focusing on painting kitchen cabinets, even though I haven't started yet. So here's the one with the clear coat. Here's the one without. See the difference? This one, it can be wiped off a lot easier than this one can. I'll do some more on the one with the clear coat. Let me know if this is helpful, you guys. I feel like there's, um, glaze is so easy to use, but there's a lot of people that are like nervous about using it. So I'm hoping that this video will help kind of ease your mind and allow you to give it a whirl without worrying that you can't do it because you absolutely can. Um, and just work at your own, you know, work at your own speed. So it definitely sits in the crevices of things. So if you had a cabinet door that had some inlays or something, your glaze would sit in those um, in those crevices of that door. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and do this side. And again, I would, if I were doing cabinets or something bigger, I would wait longer to apply the glaze. But since we're just, I'm going to really get it in those letters because I want that's kind of where I want it to sit. Okay, so I'm just going to apply some extra in those areas. Um, Whoops, I just see I just wiped too hard and wiped off some paint, but I'm okay with that. Actually gives it kind of a cool distressed feeling. Um, so, all right, with the clear coat, without the clear coat. Do you guys see the difference there? It's definitely more controllable with it. Um, and it's not as grungy. So you can have it kind of come out very lightly on something if you have the clear coat on, especially if you're using a sponge to remove rather than like a rag, it doesn't have a nice smooth surface. Um, but if you're using a sponge, usually on larger surfaces, I'll use a nice um, simple flat sponge with very little pores in it. The cheap ones you can get by like a dollar, like five for a dollar, and I'll just wipe, gently wipe off the glaze in nice even lines, okay? So that's just a quick introduction to that. Um, so that, let's say our jars are finished for now. We're going to imagine that they're painted on both sides, okay? Wish the sun wasn't so bright. Pretty soon I'll be doing most of my workshops in the shop. So one has the glaze with a clear coat, one doesn't. Um, and if you were doing this at home, you might want to make them match. But for today's purposes, I wanted it to show you how the, what the difference is. 
All right, so now um, we're going to work on, I'm going to clean up some of my stuff, and then we're going to work on getting those hooks into the frame so you can see how that goes. And again, guys, let me know if you have questions. Say hi if you're hopping on. All right. Share this video so that I can create more videos to give you more great content coming up for the new year. Um, so I've also got some twine here. You could, but you can use um, metal, you know, like wire. You can use um, lots of different things for the hanging piece. So I'm just going to take my frame and I'm going to use I have a drill here with a really skinny drill bit on it just to preset some holes, to pre-drill some holes, okay? So I'll make sure that's the top, right? And I, can you guys see that? I'm just going to find like a center point. I'm not going to be too picky about it and just go ahead and You guys can see I'm using a super small drill bit for that just to give me something to screw those hooks into, okay? Again, I'm just going to find the center point. I'm going to make sure it lines up. Out. Let's do this one a little bit more. And you don't necessarily have to have a drill. You could probably do this without one. Um, I just need something to screw these threaded hooks into. All right, so now... Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and see if I can pull this without getting paint all over everything. You guys see that okay? I'm going to go ahead and just <clears throat> start screwing the hook in. And it's a couple, it, it's at least two inches out from the frame, I would say. Um, and that'll give it the jar some space to hang. If your window has glass in it, glass pane still, you probably. Um, want to think about that because it could be an issue as far as the glass from the jar banging into the pane and cracking the pane. So that's why I'm using one without the glass. So I make sure that's in really, really well and it's sturdy because it's going to have to hold these jars. Um, and then my other one. We'll do the same thing on this side. Okay, just going to screw that in. <clears throat> okay, let me know if you guys have questions. Sorry about the sun. It's a little bit bright in here today. It's a good thing, though. All right. Just screw it in. You could also take, like, a little piece of metal, you know, like a screwdriver or something, and just spare your hands the, the trouble. Or whatever. And then if it's not totally straight, I'm just going to bend it a little bit. No big deal. Okay. So now we have our frame with our two hooks. Okay. So the next thing we need to do, and this part is a little bit harder to show. Um, what color is the paint on the jars? Oh, the paint color. Sorry, the paint color is um, Sandbar by Dixie Bell. And I have my link above if you want to check out my online shop. I've got all the Dixie Bell products in there. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. And thank you for sharing, for those of you that are sharing. I really appreciate that. Okay, so now we're going to, I'm just going to set this kind of on my lap. And then I'm just going to kind of see how far I want these jars to hang. So probably like, I don't know, like six for mine. I don't want them to hang past the frame. I want it to kind of be centered there, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, be careful about hanging um, from these because these can come off of your jars on the, on the um, antique jars. So be careful about that. Unless they're really sturdy, don't hang from the metal, metal clips, okay? And I'm also going to make sure when I hang that my front part where my atlas is is that it's facing out. Keep in mind these are going to get finished later on after the live. It's not going to look like half and half. It's going to get finished later, but for time purposes I want to show you the entire thing all together. So I'm going to take some twine or jute or whatever. You can use wire, um, galvanize, something cool. Galvanize maybe. 
um, and use that. And typically what I do, and this is the part that kind of can sometimes get a little tricky, is making sure, so I just do one of those loop, loop knots. Then I know it's going to be sturdy. That's not going anywhere. Okay. And then I'm going to try to make sure that it's going to hang properly. So I'm going to adjust that so that I can see where it's going to be. So I want it to hang about here. I'm going to just pinch it where I want it to tie, where I want it tied. And I'm going to go ahead and just give it a nice knot right there. And you can do it however, you know, however you comfortable. It is not one way to tie these. I mean, you could use um, some really cute ribbon too if you wanted. Just make sure, however you do it, just make sure it's secure enough that it's going to stay. Okay. So there we go. I can hang one. You guys can kind of see. You can hang this way, right? And then it'll be up against the wall. So that'll keep it from, I can show you. That'll keep it from moving too, too much. Right now it's just hanging kind of loosely, so it's a little different. Um, the other thing is, is you can hang it from the sides, and that'll keep it sort of even and keep it from tipping forward. And I'll show you that in my blog post for sure, so you can see exactly how to do that. So there is one, um, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. I'm going to take some glue or twine or whatever. And snip it. Oops. Put it too short. Take, usually it's a generous, you know, a generous amount just so that I have extra to play with. I'm going to make my loop on the back so that it hangs from the back. Okay. And tighten it. Wiggle it around a little bit. That one's kind of crooked. I'm going to get it centered on the back so that it'll hang. I don't want it to hang like so that the atlas is off to the side. I want that to be showing. Okay. So then, same thing. You're just going to figure out like this one's about that tall. So I'm going to do about the same thing on this side. Just make sure this is nice and tight. And sometimes, if your jars aren't super dry, you may find that you're getting um, scraping off of the paint with your string or with your twine. So just be careful how hard you do that if you don't want like a farmhousey sort of finish on yours. All right, and you could even have them hang at different heights. I'm just doing a knot in the back, okay, like that. And then I'll just tighten it to make sure that it's secure. All right, so then we'll have these adorable jars hanging from each side, right? And we can add, they'll just hang like that, and we can add whatever we have around, right? Um, I think in the jars I'll probably stick some lamb's ear, um, and sometimes I'll fill the jars with like a filler so that I don't have to buy as much to fill up the bottom. Um, so I might put some of this in. I might put, how cute is that, right? I might put some cotton balls in just to fill it a little bit. Um, maybe some, let's see, what else do I have here? Leftover from holiday, I've got some white, little white branches and some white little berries. I might add those to it. Um, maybe put the berries in the front. And then you've got a super cute little arrangement, and then you can you can just change this out any time of year. Um, and then for the center, I'm just going to add a wreath. And again, you can change out the wreath any time. I've got a little nail somewhere. Um, so it will have the wreath in the center. Move this out of the way so you can see. We'll have the wreath in the center, and then the two jars one on either side, and I'll have hangers on opposite ends to keep it balanced. Um, and you can use any, you know, generic wreaths that go all year long, or you can use, um, you know, just add a little new bow for the holiday, or you can use 
different wreaths for each season and they come in so many different sizes now there's so much to choose from um, good morning Michelle thanks for watching so anyway so this is the gist of the whole project but I'll be putting all the juicy details and the final um, picture of what it all looks like together on my website um, which is pictedandpolished.net. So don't forget to subscribe if you get a chance and definitely share this video so that I can create more great projects for you. Um, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. I look forward to seeing on Sunday what projects you've been working on and I'll be posting soon what's coming up next week for um, every Tuesday at 10 o'clock. I'll be doing Tuesday um, will be my demo day for kitchen cabinet painting. So I'll start that next week and I can't wait to share with you. Let me know if you guys have any questions um, and have a wonderful weekend. Bye guys.